Hey guys, it is um, Tuesday, January, January, June uh, 20th, 2023. And in this video, I want to talk about um, a topic that uh, a fellow by the name of LP Trades brought up. And the way he kind of asked me to talk about this, um, I'm not sure if he was like goading me or if it was um, sincere. But, um, you know, the, I guess the way that I want to frame this would be um, perseverance in trading. So, you know, I've been funded before, lost it. I've been way up in accounts, lost it. Um, and the reason why I continue on, continue to try to trade is it's just because imagining my life going into an office every day grinding out briefs and grinding out motions and grinding out briefs and grinding out motions and going to court and putting on a suit and talking to clients that I don't like and just doing that for 20, 30 years of my life. Uh, the, the thought absolutely horrifies me. Um, the, and by the way, not for such great pay. You might think an attorney makes great pay. Um, some do, most don't. Um, especially if you're, if you're in a, uh, small town um, it's not easy uh, it's not easy to persevere um, I'm a very impulsive person I want to be in the marketplace at all times um, I don't like sitting and waiting for these um, setup times at all um, it's taken a lot for me just to be able to sit here and uh, watch the chart form over time and wait for the setup times and wait for what I'm looking for and use one model. Um, I'm going to do a video on why you have to pick a trading model and specifically I'm going to talk about um, how ICT has so many models you can't possibly use them all. I mean Michael can but I can't. Um, it's too much and for a while there I was um, just trying to trade everything that I learned from Michael. Everything. And he even talks about this in the video, but you just, you can't do that. Um, Michael can do it, but I'm not Michael and I don't have 30 years of trading experience. Um, certainly not with, th certainly not 30 years of algorithmic theory and um, trying to view the marketplace from, from a trading algorithm standpoint. Um, I certainly don't have that kind of experience, not even a small, um, small fraction of it. And uh, so the perseverance or the motivation for me is just knowing what I want to do with my life. And really, I'll just be honest with you, it's more of what I know that I don't want to do with my life and the path that I was on before trying trading. And, you know, if this trading thing doesn't work out, ultimately I'll have to do it. I won't want to do it. Um these evaluation companies allow you the opportunity to get a lot of trading in a lot of experience in a short period of time and for not that much money and believe me I've gone through a lot of money on these evaluation accounts um, and it's not it's not their fault it's it's uh, it's my own I don't even you know lack of discipline and one of the things that I've come to learn is making videos like this and and um, uploading to YouTube and uploading to TradingView I've kind of, I've kind of given up on the idea that I I have the discipline to be able to wait for the setup times because I don't think I do. Uh, I basically just am working on distracting myself uh, while I'm waiting for the setup time. So so sleeping, uh, making videos, making rants like this. This is all I can do to um, distract myself while I'm waiting for the while I'm waiting for the setup times. Even though I know. Um, the marketplace is moving and believe me I want to be in on every single move but uh, I just can't and that ends up over trading and over leveraging and um, you gotta you, you know uh, I know that now I know that clear as day um, you have to mostly trading is waiting um, and I hate saying that because trading can be very exciting very very um, exhilarating when you're in a trade and and it's going in your favor, even if it's going against you, you're getting a, getting a rush of a, a motion from that. But the fact of the matter is, is that you can't treat trading like a casino. Um, 
and you gotta you gotta come to the marketplace with rules of engagement. You've got to come in with a model. You've got to come in at specified times. You have to know what you're looking for. You have to know what you want to see in the marketplace, when you want to see it in the marketplace, and you have to pick your rules of engagement because um, these things are moving all the time. Um, you're not going to be in on every move. You're not going to be in on every single one of ICT's models. Um, he has so many models, and he doesn't even teach them all on YouTube, but he teaches a lot of them, and uh, I'm fairly familiar with a lot of them now. But the reason that I settled on the silver, uh, the silver model is because it keeps me to a um, keeps me to a narrow time frame where I'm engaging with the marketplace, and then as long as I'm not scaling in, um, I'm using lower leverage. I can let these trades run against me quite a bit. Um, I tend to trade, you know, when it comes to your valuation accounts and trading prop firm accounts, I, you know, this might not be the most popular advice, uh, but you generally want to trade the biggest. You, you, it's the best idea to trade the biggest contract that they, they offer, because um, even even with Michael's, Michael's setups, you have to have a, a pretty like pretty wide stop losses, um, and that's not a fault of the models. That's just a, a the nature of the marketplace, especially with thinner instruments. So, LP asked me like, what does it feel like to get there and then blow it and then get there again and blow it. Uh, it sucks, um, but it's kind of all, um, I don't know, like when you're over trading and you're exhausting your, your, your decision making, um, you know, it's, it's kind of like you're in a trance or you're not even fully there mentally because um, you're always just like you're over trading, you're trading every single fluctuation in the marketplace. And it's just very easy to not even feel anything because I don't know. It's kind of like a gambler's high, basically. Um, so, I mean, I know that that's probably not the answer that LP was looking for. Like, yeah, I was devastated. But I wasn't devastated until after I was done trading and after I'd blown the accounts because while I was over trading and trying to trade every single fluctuation, I don't feel anything at all. I just feel um, compulsion. So I'm sure that I'm not the only one out there that feels that way, that, that um, you know, you come to the marketplace kind of kind of with a gambler's mentality um, and I'm just gonna tell you how it is you can't do that or you're gonna lose even even with Michael's concepts you're gonna lose um, if you come in to the marketplace like that um, so I think I'm gonna end up doing a video at some point on why you need to have a trading model but it's so true you've got to have a trading model you've got to know your rules of engagement um, even even with my four setup times, I'm probably still trading way more than most people trying to day trade. Like I'm trading four setup times a day, and and that is extremely limited compared to what I was doing before. And mind you, I could show you my top step, my prior blown top step accounts. Um, I I generally hit like 70% strike rate even when I'm over trading. So I'm way above random chance in terms of actually like hitting profitable trades. But I really wasn't learning. And those, obviously those 30% of trades that I was losing, I, I just would end up over leveraging and blowing the accounts, accounts with an S um, on that. So even with a 70% strike rate, and yeah, that's that's where I'm at, uh, if not higher right now, On now that I'm actually using the setup models, I'm, um, my top step shows me at 70% accuracy, but uh, some of those trades are not even like real trades, they're just scratches that I, I pull off like real quickly. So I would say that right now I'm at like 75% strike rate, you know, and even so this is not um, an easy profession. It requires a lot of patience, a lot of discipline. And here's the thing. My biggest recommendation from what I can tell is you got to find a like rather than just like willing yourself not to trade because that's very difficult for me like I'm compulsive I want to be in the marketplace at all times I don't like seeing a fluctuation that I am not participating in um, I don't even bother with the discipline thing anymore I just distract myself with videos and ranting like this so that you know it is what it is maybe it sounds childish but yeah I just that's part of the reason why I make so many YouTube videos. I think I've said this before. Um, I upload so frequently because it's just me not trading, which is what I need to do uh, in between the setup times. So today, like for example, between the AM and PM session, 
uh, I went for a walk. I just I closed all my trades that I I made during the AM session. Did pretty well during the AM session, by the way. Um, and I just went for a walk over New York lunch and coming into the PM setup time. So I think I just went for a break for like two hours during the middle of the trading day, which I would have never done before. But I know when I want to engage the marketplace now. Um, Michael will say that all of his models are equal. I don't believe that. Um, I think the silver bullet model is by far his best model because it is a time-based model that's going to keep you from over-trading. And I can't imagine that I'm the only one here who's a compulsive sort of person. Um, it's probably a big, you know, like industry standard of the kind of people that want to come and day trade. Uh, so, anyways, um, yeah, I mean, Michael says that all of his models are, are equal. I don't believe that. I think his silver bullet model is just by far the best model to trade. Um, it's going to keep you from over trading. Uh, it's going to be a very high strike rate. Like if you get in on these inefficiencies and target liquidity at the time that the trading algorithms are all converging in on the same inefficiency, it's a very high strike rate model. I can already tell you that. Um, so I personally think it's his best work by far. Now, Michael will probably tell you that that's, well, that's nonsense. All of his models are equal. That's, I mean, it's his work, obviously. I'm just using his work. But in my opinion, the silver bullet model where he's telling you this is when you trade, this is when you're looking for trades and not outside of this time, that, like the Model 22, the Model 2022 is, a, is obviously a fantastic model, um, but you don't, like he doesn't specifically say when it's supposed to form, right? The breaker blocks, order blocks, mitigation blocks, um, new week opening gaps, new day opening gaps, um, all of his other models, right? They, they are all price-based, and they're not telling you exactly when you should be in the marketplace. Now, he obviously on his Forex stuff and the kill zones, he did talk about when you should be engaging with the marketplace, but, you know, a breaker block could form at any time. It doesn't necessarily have to form at a certain time. A mitigation block, a gap, a liquidity void, um, obviously like a new week opening gap, can only form at one time, right? But anyways, um, so in terms of like answering your question, LP, it sucks. Um, but I know what I don't want to do with my life. I know what I want to do with my life. I want to be able to travel. I want to be able to um, employ myself. I'm not interested in being employed by someone else at this point. Um, so this is my dream, and I'm going to keep working on it. And I know that if I continue to implement this model and strictly follow this model, the, the math is in my favor. It's way in my favor. It's, it's, it's way, way, way in my favor. I can already tell you that just from the, just from the experience that I've already had. Um, and I don't give a fuck what they say on Reddit about, about Michael. I don't give a fuck what, they, what these other jokers say. I, I, I can't, like, you can't tell me that when I pick... Uh, like a, a trade that I entered this morning five minutes before it was 13 minutes exactly before the setup time and I was the t I, I was three points off the top tick on the NASDAQ high here literally like three points off you can't tell me that a Bollinger Band would have gotten you there or MACD or Cumulative Delta or Volume Profile bullshit it, it's not getting you within three ticks of the top tick at the time that he says it's going to be at, the, at that time or 13 minutes before, excuse me, 13 minutes before. Like, you can't tell me that, that that's random. It's not random. I've already seen it too many times. Um, not literally every single one of my trades has been profitable, but, like, a lot of them have, like 80% since I started implementing the model. So that's kind of my answer uh, to LP is, like, just I know what I don't want to do with my life. <laughs> I know that I don't want to be somebody else's bitch. And uh, I know I can, w I, frankly, I know I can, I can make way more money trading than I can as an attorney. It's not even really close. It's not really just about the money, but, I mean, it's a factor, obviously. Um, I'd probably have to, to make the same kind of money that I could make trading as an attorney. It would probably take me 20 to 30 years. So there's no question that you can make way more money trading than you can as an attorney, uh, in my position at least, um, and in my market. Uh, so, and yeah, I don't want to be somebody else's bitch. I don't want to go in the office every day and kowtow to somebody else or go to court and listen to a bunch of clients bitching at me. 
I don't want to do it. I, I don't want to do it. I, w- I went to law school. I'm a licensed attorney. That's what I'm professionally trained to do, and I don't want to do it. Um, I don't like most people. Most people don't like me. Um, I certainly don't like the clients. Um, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's not something that you want to hear. I don't like the clients. They bitch a lot. They're irritating, and I, I don't really want to take, you know, a lot of, like, the one guy's last fucking dime from him in attorney's fees uh, or hunt him, hunt him down for court. I don't really want to do that. I don't want to babysit grown adults, and that's what a lot of what attorneys do is babysitting, believe me. Um, and I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I, I don't want to do it. I don't want to go in the office every morning. I don't want to grind out briefs. I don't want to have a minimum build hours. I don't want to be a fucking cog in the machine. There's no part of me that wants to do that. Um, I would much rather set my own schedule, um, be my own boss, make my own money. It's not even It's not even like a question. If I were to practice law, I would certainly want to have my own firm just because uh, I just don't want to be somebody's bitch. And when you're an associate attorney, you are um, somebody's bitch. And I don't know what else to tell you, LP. Um, so everybody has a very prestigious outlook on attorneys. It is a it is a prestigious profession, but it's a grind. It's a it's a, not something that I want to do really. Um, so that's why I have the motivation to 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 find the to find the model. And if you wonder why I upload so many videos every day, it's just because I'm distracting myself and trying to just distraction, just waiting for these setup times, waiting for the model to play out, waiting for the setup time, and waiting and waiting and waiting. And engaging the marketplace when I know a lot of variables are in my favor. Um, and fuck what all these YouTube influencers and Reddit futures trading and all those people are fucking dumbasses. They don't know jack shit. I, I've never seen anyone pinpoint what the market is going to do like Michael does. And he might take five hours to do it. I mean, it's so what? I don't care. I'll watch him. I've watched all of his stuff. And, um,. You know, the one problem, it's not really even a problem, but the, the issue that most people are going to find with ICT is they're not going to pick a model. And finally, he did. He does say, like, you got to pick a model. And I'm probably, even, I'm probably going to even do a completely separate video on it. You, you can't use all of his models. Michael can use all of his models. They're his models. I'm borrowing it. Um, so I'm fortunate enough to have somebody like Michael teach a time-based model like this is going to stop me from overtrading. It's going to get me in the marketplace with very favorable conditions. It's going to, you know, so I'm very thankful to have found him. Um, and that's why I, I, I stopped trying to use literally every single one of his models because you can't do it. You can't do it. You're going to overwhelm yourself, going to overtrade. Um, that's why I think the silver bullet is, again, the best model. Um, it's going to limit you from overtrading. It's going to get you in the marketplace when a lot of variables are in your working in your favor. Um, it's going to give you a specific entry model, specific exit model, all of the things that over time, if you play the long game and you treat this like a job, um, and you treat this like a grind, you treat this on the long term, um, it will it will treat you well okay but you have to respect the market and that's kind of what I've been doing wrong LP to be honest with you is I've been disrespecting the market so you're gonna see a lot of videos from me Um, they're probably I don't care if my YouTube videos get five views I'm really not I don't care if they get two views I don't care if no one watches them they're just a way that I can distract myself from my compulsive instincts um, and keep myself from fucking up again, keep myself from overtrading, keep myself from over leveraging. And I know that if I do those things that I will get there and that the promised land is there and that this model can take me there. Uh, but I have to stay faithful to it. And, um, yeah, I think, um, I think, I think that's about it. Um, you, you know, um, you got to pick a model, folks. You can't. You can't pick all of his. You can. That's not to say that you can't study his other models, and that you. You know, I'm aware of an order block, right? I can see it. I'm aware of a breaker block. I'm aware if I see something and oh, that looks like a model 22, that looks like a model 2022 setting up. That looks like a rejection block. That looks like time distortion. You know, I'm aware of of it happening, 
but I'm not trading off that necessarily. I'm, I, I can see a breaker block, but that's not my model. The silver bullet is my model. Okay, I added one time frame of my own, which was the Asian time frame. And to be frank with you, it works a little bit less, but so far so good. Like I've done perfectly well using it as well. Okay, the concept of trading algorithms converging on an inefficiency um, shortly after the market open, uh, so London open, New York AM open, New York PM open, Asian stock exchange opens, trading algorithms are going to converge like piranha. They're like schooling trading algorithms. They're like schooling piranha. They're going to converge on an inefficiency um, prior to driving to liquidity. And so it's frankly, like conceptually, it's not a difficult model to understand, but boy, does it work beautifully. And so that's why I think for the rest of my life, this is the model. Um, and I tweak it. Like I like to enter on an order block above the fair value gap. That's not necessarily something that Michael teaches in the model, but I've noticed that oftentimes if you have a fair value gap or you have a volume imbalance and there's an order block sitting right above it, I just enter at the order block because it's probably going to wick up there. Uh, it usually does. So anyways, that's my answer. Um, the reason why I keep persevering is because I know what I don't want to do with my life. Um, so it takes every it takes every inch of my soul not to over trade every inch of my soul and that's that's really why I distract myself with the videos and the rants and talking about the marketplace and talking about the setup so much I doubt that I'll ever drive any real traffic to my YouTube video people think that ICT is a hack they think he's crazy I don't give a shit if he's crazy or not I know his shit works I know it works like nothing I've seen before that's what I know that's what I know because I see it every day because I'm in this marketplace every single day um, and I'm watching price. I've never seen anyone's material produce these kind of results. Um, it's, it's insane. It's crazy. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that, that, that these markets are automated. They're, they're 100% automated. Um, I, I think it would probably take like a surprise rate hike or a terrorist attack in order for human, humans to actually control this marketplace. These marketplaces are automated. They are automated. They are automated. They are automated. And um, so it doesn't mean that I'm always interpreting the, the algorithms correctly, but I know that during that setup time, I have a very high chance of, of um, getting a good setup and getting a good trade and having, having those algorithms work in my favor instead of against me. So anyways, um, keep at it, y'all. Um, that's uh, that's going to be it for this video, uh, perseverance and trading. So. Good luck to you. Um, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, affiliate links, sign up for the evaluation accounts using my affiliate link, please, and uh, all that good stuff. I'll be back. I've got a bunch of video topics that I want to talk about. Um, yeah, that's going to be it.